Hello everyone, w- w- welcome back to the podcast and in today's episode I'm joined with Lucy. Um, Lucy has Crohn's disease um, so it's, it's going to be really interesting to hear about her journey. So Lucy, thank you for um, coming on today. I know it's your first podcast. That's all right. Thank you for asking me. Pleasure. Yeah, it's, it's going to be it's going to be really fun to hear about um, your journey. Um, get to know each other, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so would you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, so um, my name's Lucy. I'm 26. Um, I was diagnosed with Crohn's when I was 23. Um, so towards the end of 2019 and um, I ended up getting surgery for my ilio- with my ileostomy bag formed in 2020. Um, I've kept it ever since, stayed on infliximab and I've not long been on the waiting list for a reversal. So looking at getting it reversed maybe early next year, but I'm still undecided as of yet. Okay. So it's it's some choices to make next year. Yeah, I've put I've put myself on the waiting list because I thought if they ring me with a date, I'll know how I feel then. Because I'm still very much undecided. I think I'll go for it. It's just a matter of when. I'm just still a little bit scared. <laughs> yeah, it's not normal to feel like that. Yeah, it's just the um. I guess it's the aspect of like because I'm well now. I'm doing really well. So it's the take a step back to mind the bag. The bag's all right, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah. So you, you are. So are you on the Inflix map now, or or are you not on that anymore? Yes. So I'm on. Um, I've been on Inflix map since. The- start of 2020 I've just still on it I've just changed from the infusions to the pens though so instead of the infusions every eight weeks I just do the injection every two weeks which is um another it's interesting in itself I don't like the injections but I think it's easier than the infusions I think you do the injections don't you yeah yours infliximab or yeah I I was on infliximab um Mm. It was first by uh, it was the first um, like you know one of those um, high dose medications that you, that you go on. Yeah. Um, mm. I was on it for a year. Um, temp mm. fusion, it I had a massive reaction, so okay. I went off it and I I, I went on Humira and everything. So I've been on that ever since. Mm. Um, so I actually had that today. Um, I, I, I had a. Mm. Humira injection today, uh, I was due. Yeah. Um, and w- what I do after I've had my injection, um, I always have ice cream. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've got the same though. I've got uh, I've got like a plastic tray in my fridge with the injections and I put little treats in it. So every time I do my injection, I get some form of treat. <laughs> yeah. It's the least we deserve after all this. <laughs> yeah, you, you've got to have ice a treat. Well. Yeah, exactly. Go and make the injection worthwhile. You do, you do, and mm. it is, it is, it, it, it is like today's injection wasn't great. It, it, um, it, it hurt a bit more than last time. I, I, mm. I always make some sort of noise. Or I like, I either laugh. I don't know why. Um, sometimes, <laughs> some, sometimes I laugh. Uh, um, or sometimes I'll, I'll scream. Um, I guess just <laughs> I, to let I it did my first one. When the um, when the IBD nurse was showing me how to do it and teaching me, I did it and I squealed and she was like, "Oh, was it really that bad?" And I said, "No." <laughs> I just thought you should squeal, so <laughs> so I did four. I think I've not long been on them, um, and like two have been okay and two have really hurt. So I think it's just finding that sweet spot. Yeah. Yeah, it is, and like, um, like when you have Crohn's, you used to having all these injections anyway. I, um, so you kind of have to learn to deal with it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got better with time, but I'll, I don't think I'll ever get used to the 
injections like cannulas I just I hate them so much I still wince every time I get one I think that's why I kind of prefer it to the infliximab because it's easier to inject than get a cannula in me yeah cannula like when I first got one I was thinking what's going on what, what, what's all this <laughs> <laughs> oh I know they're horrible yeah and you have to have pretty good veins as well don't you um yeah I've only got one good vein and that one's a bit battered and bruised now through the years so I'm having to I'm saving it for emergencies now <laughs> stay on the injections for a bit <laughs> yeah yeah it, like it, it all I guess it all worked out well like um I, I could have gone him here before the infliximab but I wanted mm-hmm. to um do the infliximab because I wanted to be in the hospital at the time because yeah. it, it was my first kind of medication and then when that didn't work I was on Humira so yeah um but the reaction wasn't a very friendly reaction either for when you flick the map um I um you know when you have your 15 minute loading dose yeah I um it I, I felt really hot between um oh, that okay. that that period and then I started feeling like really, really hot, and then like the, maybe the cannula was going to burst out or something. Um, and then I struggled with breathing as well, and um, they had to put, I think, mm. give me gas in there and stuff. Um, oh gosh, that's scary. Um, but it, it, it had to be the tenth infusion I did, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I it it was good that. Mm. Uh, I was able to go on Himura after that. Yeah. That is, and that's where, how long have you been on the Himera for then? Um, I should have been, it, it wasn't long, it, it was before the pandemic started, so it might have been late, maybe it might have been 2019 or early 2020. I think it might okay. have been 2019. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've been on it a while. I have, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, a lot longer than me. I've only been at um, my inflicts mother, or well, the injections a month or so. I think maybe two months now. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it's good when you don't have to go <laughs> into a hospital for maybe a while. And then um, I think it's good sometimes when you don't hear from them, but it's a, it's it's also I guess important to just keep a check on things. Yeah, I always think no news no news is good news. So when they're staying quiet and leaving me alone, I'm like everything's good. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I remember when I was at my worst. I was getting every other day. I was on the phone to the IBD nurses or my consultant or my, you know someone, surgeon, dietitian. Someone was involved with me like every other day. Um, that was like a full time job in itself. So I'm very lucky I don't have many anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, it, it, it is. Um, it's it is good when you have something that's that's working for you. Mm, definitely. Yeah, because it, it when something doesn't work for maybe you're on a medication that stopped working, you kind of I guess you feel the worst at that point, don't you? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's kind of hard to know as well that just either it's not working or just not not improving you, I guess. Cause it's a bit scary at first, well, especially when you're first diagnosed and everything's new to you and they just throw in steroids and all sorts of other things at you. Um, and then you just get told about these scary drugs and it's like, this is it <laughs> forever. <laughs> yeah. But, um, um, I don't mind it now. I'm used to it now. Yeah, get used to it after a while, don't we? <laughs> yeah, it's just just the first few months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All a bit crazy. Yeah, so did you say you was diagnosed in, was it 2019? End of 2019, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does that feel like a long time to you? <laughs> it, you know what? It, it does, but I think because I got... I got diagnosed and I was poorly at like a strange time. Obviously, I kind of, I I got diagnosed and it was, I had my old Crohn's. So it was kind of, 
I was just ticking along and they gave me steroids and they were stopped. And I kept going up and down on the steroids. Um, um, and I ended up with like um, a, like abdomen. Um, so then all of a sudden it was like, all right, it's severe. Now you need surgery. Now you need to be straight on to inflict some because they were talking about putting me on azathioprine, a which is like one, it's still not obviously great but it's one of the starter drugs and then all of a sudden it was like no you need infliximab straight to biologics you need surgery and then covid hit so i was booked in for surgery at the end of march and covid cancelled got cancelled due to covid um and then as i was, I was fine with that because i was just as, as much as i was just, um ended up within like three months I just lost the ability to eat I ended up being fed by NJ tube for a bit um, and then I had my up in the July so really it wasn't that long with everything but then obviously since I had my up we've had two lockdowns and it's just but it's just felt it's felt like a long time but it's been the world's been crazy the past two years so yeah it's yeah. a tough one it has, hasn't it? Because so much is still going on, and um, a lot of people get forgot forgotten about now. Because, it, like, for, for some people who maybe don't have crimes, it maybe it maybe over for them in, in ways where some people can be still isolated from maybe symptoms of Crohn's and having a flare and stuff. Well, yeah, absolutely. It's like we're obviously we still get offered a like vaccines and are told to still be careful things like that which to be honest we had to be careful before of covid anyway but it's just another thing to add on to the list of things to be wary of um so yeah it's just um it's just one of those things yeah. what you gotta make make the most of it yeah so yeah we we gotta still try and do things don't we like as much yeah. As we can. yeah exactly exactly yeah yeah so lucy what what do you like to do like um like what, what you're interested in like hobbies and stuff oh that's a tough one i um i've not I, I, this sounds weird i, I feel like because i was ill for so long it's only this year mm. i've actually been able to start doing stuff again so um I do I do a lot of walking at the moment. Um, I've got a dog, so he's he, he's an old boy now. He doesn't like to go out too much, but we go out with him. Um, I spend a lot of time with my family, to be honest. Um, I really enjoy seeing my family, my granddad a lot. Um, I enjoy swimming. Do a, started a lot of swimming since I got my stoma because I've struggled a lot finding exercises that work for me. Mm. Um, that's just I think it's it's not down to the bag itself it's more I've got a very big scar and so I just find a lot of exercises very uncomfortable um swimming um I used to play golf before I got poorly as well when I was a junior so that was always good um but yeah with that I've just I've just been working a lot <laughs> So it doesn't sound fun, but um, I just work, and then with like the change in meds and stuff, I've just been working and sleeping. It's basically been my life for a while, but we're getting we're getting back on track. What about you? What do you like? Um, I like um, I like um, I like football. <laughs> um, I can, yeah, I can see the World Cup chart on your wall. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Ready <laughs> next. Week. Yeah, I, I, I got um, I got like, I got um, I got the, I got that chart. I got, well, so I got I got England top. I got um, face mm. paint and stuff. Um, I even got um, mm. it says Santa supports England on this cut on this <laughs> We'll add Christmas to the list of things you like then as well. Yeah. I, I like I don't yeah I, I say I like Christmas um it's it's nice but I, when it is the new year it's all doom and gloom I guess <laughs> like, yeah uh, January is always blue isn't it yeah yeah so I 
but I do like swimming. Um, I say I do like swimming. Um, mm. I like I like any sports really. Um, I, yeah. I, like, I like sports. Um, um, golf I, I don't mind, but um, um, I don't know. It it just depends on like what kind of golf course I guess. Like because some are massive, aren't they? And then you have the little mini golf, which is yeah. which is okay. Um, I, I do I like, have a mini golf there, like a crazy golf. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, I like um, I like Doctor Who as well. Um, that's another interest of mine. Mm. Um, I have TARDIS behind me, don't I? So <laughs> kind of give that away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's it, it kind of I guess if you're doing you're in a bad time, I I I'm doing quite good as well. So. We're doing mm. quite good, but if we're maybe having a bad day, we can do something that um we like. Um, it might not have to be like active and stuff because, like you say, it is hard to um like with fitness, yeah. especially this last couple of years. Um, but like if you're like a show on telly, like I don't know, you you might like I I I'm a celebrity. I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm big on now. I'm a celebrity at the moment, especially now Matt Hancock's in it. That one's going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have you watched the, the last couple of episodes? Yeah, I'm keeping up to date with it. It's one of those programmes you can easily get. If you don't watch it every night, all of a sudden you're three episodes down and you don't have three hours to catch up on it. So you need to just watch it when it's on. Yeah. Otherwise I'll, I'll not be able to keep up with it. <laughs> yeah. I, I think yesterday I had to watch two episodes because but because I, I missed one um, which I recorded mm -hmm. but I'm up to date now um oh that's all right yeah no worries yeah what do you think about Matt Hancock um in, in the jungle then like uh, do you have many opinions about him going in it it's just a bit weird like I, d I just don't I don't really see his agenda to go in because um, I'm sure as many people do, the nation hates him <laughs> for a lot of things, a lot of decisions the government made during the lockdowns and all of that. Um, yeah. That's one thing everyone does. So the fact he's in, it's all just a bit peculiar to me. I yeah. mean, it's been funny. It's been, it was ever so strange watching him be in there. <laughs> but I just, I just don't see as a, I just don't see why he's in there. How, how are you feeling about it? Like, I don't think he should, like, like, it, it, I, 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 like you, I find it really funny when, like, him and the other guy went in and they, yeah, it, 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 that, that was very funny. <laughs> it, it, it was quite funny that they went to this mole place. <laughs> um, like, that was, yeah, that, that made me laugh. Yeah, I, I liked it, but like you, I don't see um, <laughs> any point. Like, I, I don't know why he's in there, like, like but I guess, um, I guess he's in there he, um, for the same reason everyone is, it's just a, trying to have fun, but, um, yeah, but yeah. It might turn, it might turn out all right, you might see in a week or so that he's, he has got good reasons to be in, but at the moment I just can't see it, I just can't see it. Yeah, and and especially like like you know that conversation where um I think it was with the the um loose uh, the, the the lady of the news was talking to Matt Hancock and yeah. um Matt Hancock said um like like the new prime minister will, will do fine and like 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 she said and it's only been in there like five minutes so you can't really say that um. Yeah, it's been there. Yeah, they've been so crazy for so long, and then as soon as promise comes in, it's he's like, oh, it's fine now. <laughs> yeah, it's not like anything else is going wrong. <laughs> no, no. Um, but uh, I, I especially like it, it's still not great for like, like what like the vulnerable, you know, um, mm -hmm. for, for people with underlying conditions, and it's, it's still like it's like back to normal isn't it like it's, it's what they said because like yeah like you you can't like even like if you want to still social distance you can't do that anymore 
Um, yeah, it's a tough one. Going to that night, obviously some people still do it or have to do it, but then yeah. it's just you, it's just so hard to actually practically do it and do it safely for yourself as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, but um, yeah, I a lot of people are very angry, aren't they? But um, about him, about him going in, and um, like it's it's completely understandable, and I guess it's really hard for the camp mates because they want to try and be as nice as they can, but I don't think it will last very long. <laughs> yeah, I think these next few days might be interesting to watch. Because I know especially Boy George wasn't a fan of him, but I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well Boy George is a, has, 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 um, yeah, like, it, 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 I find him, he's quite funny. I like Boy George in there. <laughs> yeah, they're all quite, they're all quite all yeah. right this year, to be honest. They're all quite funny. Yeah, yeah. But I think this year, is the, most of the years I've watched, that I, I didn't have a clue who most of them were. <laughs> Mm. oh yeah it's always like there's always a couple of good ones and then a few people you've never heard of no one knows where they're from yeah yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting because of course it's all started now um so mm -hmm. it's gonna be interesting to see what happens for the for the rest of the uh on February yes I'm excited for it yeah, yeah, uh, but so is there any other, like, what, do you like watching, um, like, horror or, or anything like that? <laughs> horror, I'm a big win. Friends actually have a thing where they make me watch scary movies because they like to see me really scared <laughs> um, and overreact to everything. So I'm I'm a big wimp. I can't deal with horror really. Um, I enjoy like comedy, um, and a good drama, um, especially like a, like you know like something like a thriller, something that plays on your mind a bit. Um, I enjoy things like that, but I tend to watch a lot of the same programs on repeat. But like I say, like the Office US. I love that and I could just watch that all day and have that on repeat. Um there's not a lot of varied things I watch actually. Okay. Yeah. About you, is it just up to who or I mean I, I would like anything that's good that I think's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um like I watch like uh, maybe a new series that comes out. Um yeah. Like I, I normally watch things like on Netflix, like Amazon Prime and mm. stuff, stuff like that. I don't. I used to watch the sites, but I don't anymore. I just find them boring now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, like I just just repeat and and repeat. Um, and it just it just annoys me, you know. Like um, I I watched Doctor Who maybe that they got a plot and that's maybe resolved in one or two series, but um, yeah, you've got maybe something like Emmerdale. Or like EastEnders, for example, because the last time I watched it was when a person got killed and it took about two years to find out who it was. <laughs> and I'm thinking, uh, after that I started watching it, because I found out who it was and I didn't like it. <laughs> because... <laughs> you didn't like the ending. <laughs> no, I, I didn't like it. And I, I just don't like it. it takes so long. Like, you know, they, they spend so long on this one storyline and then... Yeah. Uh, I, I can't I can't cope with it after I find out and then I just know it's going to be the same cycle something else can happen for you <laughs> well yeah they do they, I, I used to watch the soaps as a kid like with my parents and then they just started to get a bit daft and the storylines got a bit far-fetched so I kind of I lost interest when I moved out and went to uni and stuff yeah yeah I, occasionally I'll see it on the telly because people in the house like it <laughs> um yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just watch someone else like maybe um a new series maybe um i do like soap kind of things but um maybe mm -hmm. like something like waterloo road i don't mind waterloo road 
Um, Waterloo Road in, back in the day was really good. That yeah. was prime to me. Yeah, I, I, I binge watched that like in, in lockdown, I did. <laughs> I, I, I never watched it and it's, it's just coming back next year as well. So uh, that would be cool. So I think in the lockdowns, I binge watched um, Shameless yeah. again and then Married at First Sight. Oh yeah, I I I oh I also been to watch the Vampire Diaries. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's like years ago. Teen Wolf actually as well. Hmm. Yeah. Um. I like those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I like them kind of things. Maybe a bit more than maybe a series that just has one season. Then you should get it maybe a couple of years later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, but like, like Dr. Toad, it, it's possibly my like, it's on once a year, but you, you still, mm. if you're that, if you like it like me, you'll, you'll remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because like the last episode was maybe, um, the 23rd of October, and the next one's mm. going to be probably next November, so okay. it's a long, long way, but, um, yeah. yeah. I, I guess Doctor Who's around that long as well that you're willing to wait for it. Worth the wait. Yeah. Yeah, there's there, there's other stuff to do in the meantime and yeah. I, like um get um yeah, do just all, all sorts of different things and mm. yeah. But, but with um with it I do like to do videos and, and stuff like 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 acts and stuff. Um, yeah, which I kind of like. It. It's kind of I did that. Mm. Um, that's one of the things I did at the start of lockdown as well, as well as create this podcast. I, I yeah. Um, I I did do um some you know like when t- t- TikTok came, kept, it became kind of a thing. Uh, yeah. As well. Um, and I never heard of that either. So I, I get told download it, get it. I'm not doing, and I just see there's a lot of people doing top two videos on there, and um, <laughs> I think, I'm like, I'm like, I'll, I'll join, and then I get temp Doctor Sue, and I get other things, and um, because David tends to come back, I'll, I'll have to get his new suit, and I, I just do all that kind of stuff <laughs> sometimes, but not all the time. I like, I draft loads in one go, so I don't have to do it. Lots yeah, time. yeah, that's good. It's good. Be a lot of was just doing it all the time. Yeah, be a lot of podcasts and everything else. So. Yeah, like like um, podcast is easy because I can maybe just sit down. I don't have to get changed or anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I could do, yeah, I get as much as I wanted. Um, but yeah. I, I do like to go to different locations where Doctor is filmed as well, which I did do. Yeah. Um, which is pretty cool because you, you go to a place and they say, oh, it was over there, it was over there. And um, it's funny, some people still know, like, so many years later. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so do you have, um, like, with your Crohn's, mm-hmm. um, was, that, was that the first time you heard of it when you was diagnosed? So... Um... Yeah, I kind of got diagnosed, I say in a strange way. Um, I, so my, like, I, basically what happened was I was, my last year of uni, I started getting, like, um, random swelling in my joints. So, like, my, like, ankles or my knees, would li- they would literally double in size. Like, I'd just wake up and not be able to walk. It was the strangest thing. And then it would go down after, like, two days. Um, so I started seeing a rheumatologist and she couldn't find anything because all I had was swollen joints and there was no inflammation there. She was running blood tests after blood tests and she, she kind of like hit a dead end with it. Um, and she said to me, this is probably the start of an autoimmune condition, but without any of the symptoms, she can't send me for any other tests, which was like, OK, fair, she can't run me for send me for every test in the world. Um, and then a few months later, it was, I just started, um, I just started losing weight in my last year of uni, um, I was losing weight, I had like a smaller appetite, but I just put it all down to stress, because 
the final year of uni um, and I wasn't going out as much, things like that. And then I remember I just got, um, I started to get like a lot of belly ache. Um, but that was it. And they just kind of, they um, dismissed it all the time, to be fair, telling me it was women's problems and other irrelevant things. And then one day uh, the pain got so bad, I, I couldn't get out of bed for like three weeks. Um, and I've seen my GP every day. I was like, look, something's not right. Um, ended up going to A&E. They sent me home because they couldn't do anything for a belly ache. And then after about three weeks, my GP finally did an ultrasound. Um, and they told me I had appendicitis. So I got sent to hospital, CT scan, prepped for surgery. And in the morning, they said, oh, um, it's not appendicitis. You're not going for surgery. So I was like, oh, happy days. No worries. Um, and then another doctor came and told me they think I've got Crohn's. And I was like, what's that? Um, and that's and then they told me or they asked, started asking me all symptoms and stuff. Um, and I had, apart from that like lack of appetite and weight loss, I didn't have any of them. Um, so I was very much like, oh, this is a bit far fetched. I can't have this long term condition. I can't have a long term bowel condition with no bowel symptoms. Um, completely dismissed it. Um, went for a colonoscopy. That was clear. They told me that was fine. Probably just I've got an infection. And then I had a small bowel MRI and that confirmed Crohn's. Okay. So it was very like up and it was like one thing then it was Crohn's and then they were like oh no it's not and then it was um and that, that's why I say I was when I got diagnosed they were just saying it was mild um it was like I think only a patch I think it was less than 10 centimeters at the time and it was just in one place um so they just gave me steroids and that zapped it um and I was doing well for a couple of months until obviously you come off the steroids and then all, and then I just started being sick all the time. I just remember being sick all the time for no reason. Um, kept losing weight. And then that's when I kind of got to my worst um, and I ended up with the fistula. Um, I needed surgery. so And that was all within the space of like a year. Yeah. I went from healthy, um, you know, um, to bed bound and could barely work um, and nearly got sacked because I was having so much time off sick um, it was rough it was a bit all over the place yeah well, it is, it's, I think it's the hardest part isn't it when, you, when you're getting diagnosed with Crohn's yeah because especially when I was when I was waiting for my scans um, in between so when I got after, between when I, they thought I had appendicitis and they told me they thought it might be Crohn's, but between that admission and being diagnosed, it was about six months. So I got diagnosed pretty quickly in the end, um, considering I didn't have that many symptoms. I was quite lucky. Um, in those six months, um, I did start to get worse, kept losing weight, and I was having a lot of time off sick. And the problem is I was, obviously, when you have a lot of sickness at work, you have to talk to your manager um, they they just have to make sure you're okay um a lot of it and I was having these conversations and I, I just had no explanation for it I was like I'm just being sick all the time you know yeah I, just, I don't really understand why I didn't have a diagnosis so it was hard for them as well because they didn't know what was going on like how can you support someone who doesn't have a diagnosis it's really difficult and obviously it's just the unknown for you because you, you just think the worst and then so you get told it's Crohn's and it's lifelong and, and there's nothing, not a lot to do about it apart from shut you on all these meds. And yeah. then it doesn't always work. <laughs> no, don't. It's it's nice when it lasts, but when something goes wrong and it's, it's hard, isn't it? Okay. I mean, touch wood, I've been... I've been good since my surgery. I've had a couple of blips, but then again, I think it might not be the Crohn's. It could be anything, you know, normal people can't, I say normal, you know, people without Crohn's, they might get, um, they, they feel bugged down for a few days and stuff like that. So it's just 
hard to it's hard for me to know the difference I think because I only have one I've only had one period of being really sick so that that's all I know about my Crohn's like at the moment I've been in remission since I've just got the all clear from a mission from a sigmoidoscopy I had a few weeks ago um so I don't really know and I've because I've stayed on infliximab that's kept it at bay so I don't really know what else it's like apart from that yeah um when you had your sigmoid ostopy did did you yeah. have um sedation or, or or gas and air or anything I just had gas and air um I wanted sedation, but they told me. I think I had an e. I had an evening appointment. Um, so it's about. I think my appointment was at half six. But by the time we could have got in and you sign all, the, and she asked me for the sedation, and she said I could be there for up to four hours afterwards, and I said I'm not staying here until midnight. I said I've got work tomorrow. <laughs> So, so I thought I'll just have gas and air and then you can go home after like I think I went home after about an hour yeah but um, well, I I knew I say I knew um I haven't I had it just to check up on things so I had it just to check there was no Crohn's there and um to see if I could have my reversal so I because I don't have any active Crohn's Obviously, I appreciate they're very painful for people. Obviously, if you have inflammation and you're in pain, they're very painful. But because touch would have been good, it wasn't that bad. So, yeah, yeah it is hard. Um, yeah, I think that's crazy that they said that you would have to stay for four hours afterwards, though. Um, yeah, because I've I spoke to other people about it, and other people said no after sedation. I went home after like an hour or two and I was like oh it's just <laughs> maybe, maybe they said it as a precaution but um or they just really didn't want to give me the sedation <laughs> maybe 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 that was it <laughs> yeah maybe that they wanted me just on the gas and air so they get rid of me quick <laughs> yeah I, I I had one of them um last year I did mm. uh, I had one last how, year. how'd you find it did you go for the sedation no, I didn't go. To, I, I I went for the same as you. Um, the, just the gas and air. Yeah, I went for that gas and air this time because I didn't want to stay. Um, regardless how how long it was, uh, I know I'd go. Yeah. I'd be able to go sooner. Um, yeah. And I had mine in the morning as well. Um, mm. So I I probably would have been a bit moody so <laughs> or anything. So. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but I didn't. The gas and air, um, it, it, I, I didn't mind it. I just felt it more, I think, than when I had the sedation for my kind of yeah. which I had earlier on. But um, but yeah, I had the enema to make you kind of have mm. to go to the toilet beforehand. Yeah, yeah, I had one of those as well because I've got um my else to meet to do much, so it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Well, yeah. I am. Um, when I had my colonoscopy, so when I was first diagnosed and I had my colonoscopy, I opted to have gas and air, but I only chose not to have sedation because I was more scared of the cannula than of the colonoscopy itself. So <laughs> and I was that I was that bad with cannulas back then. And I remember I remember coming out, I remember telling one of my friends about it, and they were like, So you weren't you were that more scared of the tiny little needle that goes in your arm or wherever than you were for the camera. And I said, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is, it is a nicer cannula, really, is it? Um, no. Doesn't feel great, does it? <laughs> no. Um, because they they say when you have it in that you can move about with it. But when I had it, and I would, I would try and stay still with whatever arm it was in. I don't know why. <laughs> well, I see, I find I don't know if it's just when I was on the infusion unit. I don't know if it's just because they use those like throwaway cannulas. They're not as like I, I don't know if it's something to do with the sarts. Uh, they don't use you know like on the ward. 
um but I can't move my arm all of a sudden the machine starts binging and once that starts going you just know it's going to be a long infusion <laughs> and it's just awkward when the nurses come over every five minutes and you're like sorry I picked up my drink <laughs> things like that yeah, it's the, yeah, it is annoying when they do do that, and um, <laughs> I I always, if I was going at like lunchtime and stuff, I I would always take a fat lunch because I I wouldn't want to. I I never <laughs> ate anything at the hospital because I didn't really like the food. The only food I did like was the chips. The chips were alright, but <laughs> yeah, everything else was not good. Um, <laughs> no, I used to get um tea or tea and biscuits at mine so it was just because eventually my I think I'd been on it for a while so eventually my infusions weren't that long they only lasted about an hour so once you've had your tea and your biscuits it's time to go home it's great yeah yeah I, I was I had that as well um it might have been coffee and biscuits yeah 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 I had um yeah. Do you have to have like decaf or anything, or are you okay with caffeine? Um, no, I'm I'm fine with um with caffeine. Um. Hot drinks and the thing with the my with my um obviously I've got a disease at the moment, but my with my stoma some things just kind of um they just make it I call it grumpy, um but they just misbehave a little bit so it's just it just makes like your output looser or more air so but then I just have leperamide to counter it. So it like so I'm fine I'm fine with it as long as I or I have something like stodgy so if I have coffee rice you know it's just like balancing it um which was really tricky at first it was really con confusing to try and understand that you had to have it at the same or same time to tr kind of balance it um but I think I'm I say I'm getting there with it I'm on about reversing it as soon as I get used to it but. <laughs> Yeah. always the case but yeah it's just it's just balancing things there's not the only thing I can't really eat um there's nothing I can't really eat and some things I just have to be careful of the amount so like nuts and mushrooms I could just have a few so I tend to avoid them just to kind of stay safe so yeah it really you can eat everything else. What about you? Is there anything you can have with? Um, like I can't have caffeine. Um, like okay, I can't have. Um, now I'm okay. Before when I was first, I know I couldn't eat anything. Um, but from chicken, which yeah. is, still hurt. But like spicy yeah. foods, I can't really have many spicy foods. Yeah. So I, I kind of, I stay away from them, but every so often I, I do like something spicy. Um, um, you got to every so often. Me do, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I used to say some things were just worth the pain, um, but then it got to a point where it just wasn't worth anymore. Like I knew some things would like upset me or kind of, make me sick of things I think like onion, onions were a big one for me onions used to make me um they used to make me really sick and it, I could I could deal with it at first but then one time I had I can't remember what I ate but it had a, it, like a tiny bit of onion in and I was in bed for like three days couldn't move couldn't lift my head off the pillow and I was like this onions are not worth it anymore yeah. um it was ever so strange and that's how food got for me food got it was just kind of little by little everything everything just got really bad um and that's why I ended up getting tube fed for a few months because I just couldn't tolerate food 
Like even I couldn't have a slice of toast, um, a yogurt, anything. Okay. It's really bad. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, like I, I, I think that's that. Like with food, it's just it's a, it's it's a difficult one because like maybe for a period of time you can have something and then you can't. Um, like with, yeah. with onions. I don't really like that anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, like, when I, someone does a curry, I have to take the onions out. But, like, I don't, I don't really like it. Yeah. Um. Oh. Yeah. A, yeah. Onions were always bad. I just remember I, I ended up being on. It was just like the ham sandwich diet because all I could eat was ham sandwiches for quite a while. That's what I could eat. I'd have one for lunch and one for dinner, and then that was that. Yeah. It's, at least you can eat something, though. <laughs> yeah, I guess it was something. I couldn't eat ham sandwiches anymore. I was like, oh, no, now I've got no food left. I thought like, there's literally nothing I can eat. Um, that's why I ended up with the tube and had that for about three months. But I didn't mind it. It wasn't that bad being tube fed. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, like, I think I had to have a quite like baby portions um, when I was in that, like, at the beginning when I was lost so much weight and I was in so much pain. Yeah. Like, some like baby food and stuff. Oh, yeah. It, just eating like tiny like little and often aren't you you try um but it is hard it is hard especially when you're that poorly it's like sharp it was sharp pain it was like in 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 your stomach it was it was like mm. which isn't isn't nice it's, it's not nice to to go through that kind of stuff is it no no, it's not. Yeah. One at all. Yeah, but the good thing, Lucy, that we're we're doing all right at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Just got to make the most of it while you can. Yeah. Yeah. We do. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. If, if this has taught me anything, it's taught me that the most of the good times, and. We'll deal with the bad times when they happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, when they come to it, we'll have to deal with them. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Cross that bridge when it happens. Yeah. Just uh, enjoy ourselves. We do. We do. Um, <laughs> before we before we finish, Lucy, because it's it's been great experience here. I, I hope mm -hmm. you've uh, hope you've enjoyed it and everything. Uh -huh, thank you. Yeah, is there, is there any last things you want to say or any advice or, or just anything to finish? Um, no, I think that's it. I My only advice um, is always to just talk to people about it, um, whether it's your family, your friends, or whether you can't speak to them and you reach out online. Um, like I'm sure you know, there's a fab little community online lots of people who are willing to give you advice or just even be like a friend for you and um, it's just reach out and be open about it because I for a long time didn't tell anyone and they were very difficult for me and as you know what as soon as I opened up I did not regret it I had not one bad thing said um, I guess I was quite embarrassed at first, but there's nothing to be ashamed of because you, you you know once you open up you'd be surprised who else is suffering. A lot of my friends and stuff say their family has it or something similar, um, and they need advice. So yeah, just open up that sort to whoever you can, whoever you feel comfortable with, um, and don't keep it a secret. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Like talking is the way, isn't it? To... Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter who to do. Um, open up to whoever you can. 
um, especially if you if you're struggling in person, reach out online, and someone's willing to listen. I know I speak to quite a lot of people who um, you know, struggle to open up to the friends or family for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, there's always someone there. Yeah, there is, and by like you say, it's good that you you support people who are maybe going through bad times. So that that's just helping people. Yeah, no, definitely always there. Yeah, so I, I'm glad that you've enjoyed it, Lucy, because it's been it's been good. Um, yes, it's been fab. Thank you. Yeah, you can you can say you've been on a podcast now, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me. It's been great, and yeah, well, I'll do it again sometime or something. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's been really Absolutely, fun. any time. Yeah. So everyone who's either maybe watching or um and, and seeing this episode on the podcast, hope you've enjoyed it as well. Um, and we'll see you in the next one. And Lucy, it's been been great again, and I hope you have a nice rest of your evening and and, and day. Yes. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.